Yo, what's up guys, Sergio Gordon here, welcome to this new episode. In today's video, we're gonna be playing the new global tournament. It's a draft tournament, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the best strategies, the best tips and tricks to be able to get as far as possible and beat your record in this global tournament. So I would say, let's just hop into the first match. Well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, as I said, the best strategy, some tips and tricks in general, playing this game mode and in general in some global tournaments. So in my opinion, a lot of people play all their games on the first day, which you definitely shouldn't do. It's a four day long tournament. I think right now there's still like three days and 20 hours left when I'm recording. I don't know when you guys are watching, probably still like three days and 12 hours, something like that. So the most important part while drafting is of course thinking about your own deck, but at the same time, think about what cards you're giving to your opponent. So of course, like this is just a basic example, but let's say you can choose between um, arrows and look. And maybe in general you prefer lock, but you already gave before um, your opponent like some minions, then of course you gotta take arrows. Like I feel like it's some um, basic thinking, but at the same time some people don't really focus on other deck, like the other cards uh, yeah, you give to your opponent, and they mainly focus on what cards are you picking. But I think it's very important while picking, think about, okay, in this case, for example, or the example I gave, um, I just gave my opponent minions, so it would be a very good idea to yeah pick the arrows in this situation. Okay, so in this case, I actually picked Goblin Giant. Why? Because Goblin Giant is a very um, yeah, versatile win condition. I feel like with basically any card in the game, you can make some pushes with it. In this case, we have quite a lot of spamming cards. We have the Mini P.E.K.K.A. We have Magic Archer. And I feel like in general, Goblin Giant is just yeah pretty hard to defend still. So that's why I decided to pick the Goblin Giant. I decided to pick Mini P.E.K.K.A. because I already... Um, yeah, well, we gave him the Rem Rider. And I think Mini P.E.K.K.A. is also very good um, combined with the Goblin Giant, like behind it. So yeah, looks like this guy is running some kind of Mega Knight Red Rider deck. So he actually has a decent deck as well. But I think we still should be uh, yeah fine. Especially once we hit double leaks. I feel like our deck. Because yeah, so far we have a lot of kind of heavy cards. Should get a m uh, much stronger. Okay, so the awkward thing is our side court. Now I think the best thing we could do in this situation is Goblin Giant like this on defense. To be able to distract the um, Executioner. And then maybe afterwards get a nice lineup with the Magic Archer. Mm, nah, maybe it's not worth it actually. I feel like it would have been a little bit too aggressive. And then the Goblin Giant pushed it um, yeah, away anyways. So I don't really want to use my Elixir Golem to win this. I feel like Elixir Golem, well, in some situations it could be decent. Like it's, if it's your only win condition, I guess you have to depend on it. But now that we have the Goblin Giant, I feel like it's not really going to be um, yeah, a very useful card in our deck. So let's actually wait and see what he's going to do. Okay, I'm just gonna cycle mini pick in the back in the same lane as his Valkyrie. And then afterwards we can maybe set up a Mortar defensively as well. Okay, perfect. Let's set up Mortar defensively. So usually in draft, I feel like a lot of people also play like very aggressive. I think in general you should um, yeah play like passive because of course like let them attack and then afterwards you can get nice counter push. So in this case, as you guys can see, even though we have the defensive mortar there, this guy is yeah still pushing into it. And here we can actually get a nice uh, double lane push going. Yeah, look at that. He's spending so much elixir on the left side. There's 30 seconds left. I feel like we can get tower or take a lot of damage with this right side push. He's probably going to Mega Knight. There you go. And then let's wait a little bit for the Mega Knight to jump towards the um, elixir golem. Okay, perfect. It's walking up now. So let's get the nice lineup with the magic arch. And in the meantime, the elixir golem is getting so much damage. So even though I said elixir golem isn't really going to be useful, we actually end up taking the tower because of it. Why? Because, um, yeah, the double lane pressure there, um, kind of predicting him to spend a lot of elixir on the goblin giant. In this case, he spent the hunter. He spent the valkyrie. So he spent a lot of elixir on the left side. Afterwards, we could just get a nice push going on the right side. Um, yeah, elixir golem plus magic archer getting a ton of damage. So what are some cards you usually want to try and pick? I feel like in general, sometimes you're missing some spells. So some cards, for example, let's say Electro Wizard, let's say Princess. Some cards which kind of depend on um, like a spell, like for example, can replace a spell. Or in this case, for example, we have the, uh, we have the option between Minion Horde or Musketeer. Minion Horde in some situations can be extremely strong. Why? Because let's say he doesn't have a spell, or let's say he only has a spell, but it's for example lightning, then the minion horde is gonna get so much value. Of course you can't know, because sometimes it's kind of random, but in this case he gave us the poison, and it's a possibility that he won't have a good card against the minion horde. So sometimes you also kind of need to take a guess, um, I guess you could say, like sometimes you kind of need to take the risk, but I definitely think it's worth it with these type of cards, because um, yeah, not very often they're gonna have arrows, so most of the times, these type of cards like Mean Horde, like, I don't know, Princess, Dart Goblin, um, they will get a lot of value. So let's actually go Mean Horde here. I guess we'll find out soon if he has um, arrows or not. In the meantime, the Mean Horde plus the Knight are going to DPS down the Mega Knight. And then the minions will also be able to take care 
of the musketeer so maybe he didn't have it in cycle or maybe he indeed is not gonna have a good spell against the minion horde so that will be awesome looks like he has lock so he might have um yeah taken lock over for example the poison and then having lock as his only spell our minion horde is gonna get an insane amount of value so that's yeah kind of like the bad thing about uh, draft i feel like sometimes you do kind of depend on luck but then at the same time as long as you're um kind of smart and yeah don't take like too risky picks I think you should be able to get really far in the tournament so yeah nice poison here defensively gonna get a lot of value hunter in the meantime also cleaning up basically all the troops and then we might be able to get a nice counter push here with the hunter let's actually go bennett up front looks like he goes with his musketeer so the bennett plus the hunter might be able to take care of that and get a little bit of chip damage okay yeah we got a little bit of chip damage with the um, hunter shot and then the musketeer is not gonna get any damage so yeah looking very good so far i wonder what he has as a win condition so far he showed that he has uh, Mega Knight and then in some drafts like let's say there's only one win condition in this case sometimes Clash Royale I don't know why but they see wall breakers as a win condition like for example in this situation we had the choice um, between Royal Giant and between the, um, the wall breakers so let's say he doesn't have any win condition and his only win condition in Clash Royale eyes is the wall breakers that will be so good for us because this way yeah he doesn't really have a real win condition in my opinion wall breakers is not really a win condition um it's more like a support card with for example minor or with for example mega knight or something in this case he does have mega knight but then again he doesn't really have a solid win condition i guess we could say okay so royal giant in the meantime getting a lot of damage here i guess we can cycle magic archer in the left side lane and then we can go knight here in the middle why do i knight in the middle because this way both towers will end up shooting you guys will notice that soon um, on the troops in the middle so let's go me and horde up high let's go with the ice spirit here in the middle bend it on the right side against the prince and then we can set up another magic archer here in the middle very good defense he's still gonna have to defend both the magic archers and the minion horde and the bandit on the right side i think is also gonna dash she still has a little bit of hp so i think she dashes with one hp there you go dashes on top of the tower and i think okay let's wait a little bit let's not be too aggressive magic archer actually got a nice little um chip damage on the left side tower let's go with minion horde here and then we can royal giant right side and i think that's gonna be yeah pretty much good game i don't think he has much to stop this we can even keep under pressure by going bandit left side he's probably gonna go there you go I just wanted to say that E barbs onto the right side as soon as he can. And then in the meantime, the bandit plus the troops on the left side will be able to get a good amount of damage. If anything, we have a very solid defense. So yeah, let's go knight on defense. Let's go hunter just to make sure that we don't take too much damage. And then here we can pretty much choose for any tower. We do need to watch out a little bit because he does have his um, Inferno Dragon in cycle. So I guess in these type of situations also, guys, even though you have a lot of damage lead, like don't, don't rush it like you... Yeah, unless you're really rushing, like for example, you need to catch a bus or something, I guess you could rush it. But in general, just play calm, um, secure the victory first, and then afterwards you can go for the tower, even though you're leading by a lot of HP. Because sometimes I feel like also people think like, okay, I feel like this guy is not that good. Um, we basically have this win already, um, or this game already won. And then they end up playing very aggressive and they end up losing in some situations. So yeah, let's again go with me and Horde. He's defending very well, by the way. But I think this should be a good game. Yeah, Bennett dashes onto the right side tower. And then it's not going to be poison range yet. I believe poison on tournament standard does 224. So let's go Ice Spirit. Ice Spirit jumps. And he can't really stop the Royal Giant anyway. So that's going to be a good game. Nice win there. He didn't really uh, yeah, manage to get any damage. Why? Because he doesn't really have a solid win condition. That's the only bad thing about this draft mode. Sometimes you kind of depend, as I said, also a little bit on your draft. But I guess while picking smart, you should be able to um, yeah, get a lot of victories. So in this case, for example, E-Spirit, I prefer it much more than Heal Spirit. Why? Let's say we don't have a spell. And let's say this guy, for example, chooses, I don't know, Beds, Skeleton Army, or any like spammy cards. E-Spirit is going to help way more than the Heal Spirit. Here, I think I'm going to go Night Witch. Night Witch is actually a card which can annoy quite a bit um, when they don't have a big spell. And then here, I think I'm going to pick the Electro Dragon okay so interesting draft we're kind of gonna depend on whatever win condition he gave but i feel like we took a good amount of support cards we took an e-spirit which is gonna help a lot against a potential spam deck and then the electro dragon against um yeah basically any unit on defense and then sometimes afterwards behind the tank is also very good okay very nice prediction by him i guess he gave us the snowball and he knew that we were uh, yeah potentially gonna um skeleton army there i wasn't actually kind of yeah, how do you say ready for it because I was actually, yeah, looking at you guys while talking with you guys. And then I saw the better ramp coming at us. So that's kind of unfortunate, but I think we should be fine. And oh no, guys, look at that. What card we have? We have wall breakers. Like, I don't know why Clash Royale thinks that wall breakers is a win condition. 
Um, and then I guess his weak condition is gonna be better, Rem. So yeah, that's unfortunate, but I think we still should be able to get the win here. As long as we get um, a lot of advantage from the Night Witch. That's kind of when I picked Night Witch, because in some situations, when they don't have a big spell, Night Witch can actually create a lot of pressure. And in this case, I'm gonna combine it with the Prince, and we can maybe even get a Fireball down here. Qu uh, quite aggressive, but I think it's gonna be okay. Because the Fireball got a lot of value, Prince is still quite healthy, and then the Night Witch uh, plus the Bats is also getting a bit of damage done. Okay, so not the best situation to be honest. Okay, let's go with E-Spirit here. Let's go with Night Witch and then afterwards go with Skeleton Army. Okay, so we do end up defending, but that's gonna be so much damage. The good thing is that we will have a decent counter push, but the bad thing is that we don't really have a win condition. So yeah, let's go with Night Witch, let's go with um, Ice Golem. Let's then go with the Wall Breakers here as well. Musketeer is actually putting a lot of work in. We could have maybe picked the Musketeer instead but look at that guys oh my god the wall breakers actually ended up connecting on the right side tower and then we catched his goblin gang so that's gonna be a lot of damage and a lot of value so even though the situation isn't the best i definitely think we can still win because if i'm not wrong he doesn't have a big spell um his only spell is snowball so we should be able to build like an insane push with the electro dragon with the night witch with the ice golem tanking even a prince or maybe in some situations some double lane pressure Okay, let's go e Drake here, let's go Night Witch as well, let's cycle E-Spirit in the left side, and let's then go with Ice Golem here. Okay, looks like he goes with his Bowler. I kind of want to go Wall Breakers, yeah, let's go Wall Breakers, and let's then go with another e Drake. Okay, perfect. And look at the Night Witch bats, look at the e Drakes. they're getting so much um, value, so much damage actually done as well to the right side tower. So that's why I tried to pick those cards, even though in this case we kind of got the worst case scenario um, where your opponent gives you wall breakers in Clash Royale Ice, as I said, it's a win condition. But even though we kind of got the worst situation possible, look at the cards I drafted. In this case, Electro Dragon, Night Witch, E-Spirit, they're putting in so much work, they're getting so much damage done, and they're just taking um, yeah, a lot of value here. Okay, nice, e Drake is gonna chain on top of everything, and then we do need to watch out with the counter push here, especially since we don't have a, a spell. Okay, let's go Skeleton Army. Looks like he does go with his Heal Spirit. Let's go with E-Spirit just to make sure we reset it. And that's exactly why I picked the Heal Spirit. No, excuse me, the the E-Spirit over the Heal Spirit. Why? Because it's just so much more versatile. Like, you always need to think about um, potential situations like this where you're going to end up with basically no win condition and then you still end up winning. Why? Because you ended up drafting very good support cards and kind of cards which are not a win condition but then at the same time you can get something out of it like for example in this case um the night witch yeah it helped out a lot it creates the bets it creates a lot of pressure together with the electro dragon etc etc i think you guys get the point i'm trying to make um yeah wall drafting so in this case of course i pick minions i'm not gonna give him arrows why because arrows are very good against me it's like you just need to be kind of um yeah thinking ahead and in my opinion always think about potential counters or just potential good situations okay i kind of want to pick the e-barbs i feel like e-barbs are actually interesting in draft um and then here i'm gonna pick the e-spirit as i said e-spirit is very versatile in my opinion i like it a lot can reset cards it can reset um for example in this last match the better room sparky in some situations and in general it can also kind of serve as a small spell against troops like skeletons um bats etc etc Okay, looks like this guy starts off with the ghost. We can go with barbs, and then I would like to see our wing condition. Again, we were not able to pick the wing condition, but we were able to pick a good amount of support cards. E-barbs can also create a lot of pressure. Worst case scenario, we kind of have like a bridge pen deck. As I said, I don't know my actual um, wing condition, but so far looks like a um, yeah, bridge pen deck. And then looks like we actually have e-golem plus graveyard. Okay, interesting. E-barbs getting a lot of value there against the Rem Rider. We're going to have a nice little counter push, and we can get some arrows down here. On top of the Resco boy, on top of the Resco girls, and get some chip damage on the tower. While the minions plus the E-Barb are still alive, we force out um, Ice Golem, so that's perfect. Okay, so um, yeah, I think our our deck is actually pretty good. Elixir Golem, as I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not a big fan of it in draft. But in some situations, you can definitely get a lot of value out of it. Um, maybe with some double lane pressure in some situations. And it looks like this guy actually cycles Ghost opposite lane, so well played by him. I guess we're gonna have to go Barbs on top of that again. And then he's still forced to defend the Prince. Let's see what he has against the Prince. In some situations, they don't really have any troop to distract it. In this case, he's gonna have to yeah, spend his Valkyrie to counter the Prince, which is not really ideal. So it looks like he doesn't really have a good distraction for the Prince, which means we can get a lot of value out of it um, yeah, during this match. Okay, let's go E-Spirit here on the left side, and then afterwards we can prepare, I guess, um, some minions here to take care of this Rascal girl on the left side. And then, yeah, I think we should just wait. I feel like this deck especially 
having the elixir column and stuff like that we just need to wait a little bit and kind of yeah get a counter push going okay in this case he goes ice column in the back i guess we can go elixir column in the back same lane as him why because we have so many troops which can um yeah get a lot of value behind the elixir golem we have prince we have e barbs um and then if he decides to pressure we have the barbarians as well okay so perfect let's go i guess with e barbs here and then we can even go with a graveyard as well i'm gonna go graveyard like this nice perfect let's get the arrows down as soon as we can and then look at this push guys we actually have a very strong push there on the left side e barbs are gonna kill the valkyrie prince is still alive looks like he has mega knight okay but then look at the damage we're getting. We do need to watch out with the counter push. This is kind of scary, but I think we should be able to yeah, get a decent defense here. With the uh, minions, with the prince, e-spirit here to reset everything. And then we can get the barbs down. Nice, very good. And that's exactly why I like the e-spirit. It just gets so much value in many situations. Okay, let's get the e-golem down as soon as possible. I'm actually going to arrows first before going with the graveyard. And then I think this should already be a good game. His only spell is rage. So in this case, the minions are also getting a lot of value. Luckily for us, we did end up taking the arrows instead of giving him the arrows. That's exactly what I'm trying to uh, yeah, say. Oh, wait, what? We didn't even take the tower. I already tried to go for the... Okay, never mind. We just cycled arrows, so that's perfect. I already yeah just put the graveyard there on the three count, thinking that we would already take the tower. He actually ended up defending. Imagine we didn't have the arrows and then we would end up losing there. That would be uh, yeah very sad. But luckily for us, we did end up getting the victory. So let's hop into one more match, guys. And that's going to be it for today's video. I will try to show you guys one more time the best strategy to be able to win your matches. Like kind of my thought process while picking. So in this case, Bowler is such a good card. I feel like Bowler is very versatile. And I feel like Bowler in general is just um, yeah, really good in the meta and really good against any card. Okay, let's go Graveyard here. Let's go Mother Witch, of course, because we um, yeah picked the Graveyard. And then here, I kind of want to go with sparky but at the same time let's go with tesla why because we gave him the balloon so i think tesla is a little bit more solid on defense and then sparky would have been a little bit more solid on offense that's so unfortunate that i didn't give him the graveyard imagine i gave him the graveyard and then uh, picked the mother witch afterwards that would have been insane but i guess that's as i said like sometimes in draft you are a little bit luck based like it does depend a little bit on the luck of course um if this draft would have been like for example graveyard first and then afterwards the the mother witch i of course or first the mother witch and then afterwards the graveyard i of course would have done a different draft okay let's go goblins here to distract the sparky while the tesla tower and the firecracker is gonna take care of it and please tell me that he's not gonna activate the king tower with that firecracker okay luckily for us he didn't he did try to activate it there with the dark goblin luckily for us he didn't get it so i didn't actually think about it but now i'm gonna be way more careful while using the firecracker okay he does go with his balloon well played by him we don't have the tesla in cycle we have to go with a firecracker and then we have to go with the last second tesla here to uh yeah distract the balloon and try to get a decent defense okay nice looks like we got a good defense i am kind of afraid though but i think the firecracker here again will not activate the king tower the hunter should be able to kill it before she kills him or maybe they trade out okay yeah looks like they trade so perfect nice okay we're gonna have to try and get a graveyard push going soon guys because i feel like sooner or later he's gonna activate the king tower with the firecracker which is definitely not um yeah, something we want to happen so i'm actually gonna go graveyard goblins here kind of aggressively but i think it should be a good push especially having the um, rage for the potential goblin gang or in this case he just goes earthquake and he um yeah also just cycled the mega knight in the back so pretty decent timing there and a little bit of chip damage okay so pretty good situation i think can go bowler here i think the bowler might even be able to kill the dark goblin actually i don't think we need to drop anything else um oh no it doesn't or now it's gonna okay now it is gonna wait this mega still has a lot of hp but the ghost is gonna distract it right on time so that's perfect and then we might be able to get a mother witch down here okay nice let's go mother witch as soon as possible and let's see what he's gonna do okay looks like he goes with his sparky let's go firecracker here even though firecracker might be able to afterwards activate the king tower i think it's still necessary here on defense uh, should be able to get a lot of value to be honest okay let's go goblins again to distract it and then afterwards go with the ghost here as well just to make sure that we don't actually um yeah, take any damage and then let's graveyard here nice firecracker is still alive we might be able to or we might be able to get a rage down here let's see if that helps okay didn't help that much but we still got a decent amount of damage with the firecracker splash damage and then also with the graveyard um yeah hits there Okay, let's go mother witch i don't think we even need to test land this situation i'd rather save up elixir go for another graveyard and then um yeah have a nice counter push as you guys can see balloon doesn't hit 
Rage ready for the Goblin Gang. Let's see where it at. Okay, looks like he doesn't use it, but anyways, this should be a good game. We still have the Bolo there. Graveyard is looking onto the tower, and that's gonna be a nice victory. Flawless in today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's video. Hopefully, you guys could learn some tips and tricks. Um, just to remind you guys, just to kind of like sum up the tips and tricks and the strategy for today's video. For today's um, tournament, well, for the upcoming days, because it's three days and 20 hours. Remember to always think about what are you picking and what are you giving to your opponent and what do you already gave. So, for example, in um, yeah, the situation, I think it was two matches ago, I had I picked the arrows or I picked the minions, excuse me. Of course, I'm not going to give him arrows. And then also always think about the win conditions. Some situations you might even end up without a win condition. Exactly what happened to me because I didn't have a win condition. I only had um, yeah, the wall breakers there. But thanks to all the support cards, we ended up picking E-Drag, Night Witch um yeah we ended up just having a good amount of pressure and then we still ended up winning that match so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did please make sure to smack the like button if you're not subscribed to the channel feel free to subscribe and i hope to see you guys in one of my next videos take care guys